why is maths, math seen to be hard? Now, I must say that as a parent, if you have sat through the PSLE paper yourself, right, you will find that there are many items that you can manage even without uh, studying or revising. It's just very foundational. So if you look at the paper, there's a range of uh, difficulty level across the items. There are some items that are very basic that will help a child to um, do reasonably well past a subject just by understanding the fundamentals. Then there are some really challenging questions that are meant not to be solved by everyone because it's meant to be difficult question, but those questions typically are not many. You know, you may see two or three items like that in a year, and the items are designed such that there are steps and, and parts to it, so that a child may find that the item is not entirely inaccessible because he can solve part A or part B, he just couldn't solve part C, something along that line to make the paper accessible to students. But the paper has to be designed with that range of item type so that you allow students with different level of mastery to be able to demonstrate that. Uh, if we have a paper that is very easy, I think it helps to give every child, I think, the experience that they have done very well. But you may not find that kind of paper as helpful when it comes to making some recommendations about whether they should take G3 math or G2 math or G1 math in secondary school. Because if I set a very basic paper, right, I know that all of them who uh, pass it will be able to handle G1 math. But mm. who among them would be able to handle G3 math in secondary school? I actually do not know if I have a very basic paper, right? I have to have a paper that has some difficult items so that I know, oh, these kids actually uh, answer them quite well. They should be able to handle the, uh, that level of math in secondary school. So that's the purpose why PSI papers have items of different uh, difficulty level. We're always trying to look ahead and see what the students need today so that 20 years later, when they enter the workforce, they are ready. And you get some of this feedback from employers, from thought leaders, uh, and, and we try to make sure that we don't shortchange them. If we teach them today like how we were taught 20 years ago, I think we won't be able to say we have been fair to preparing them for the future. Uh, but I know this is hard for parents to um, digest because you grew up in those curriculum and you were all right. The curriculum we experienced 20, 30 years ago went through the same process of trying to review and make sure we are ready for the world of tomorrow. You will never be ready for the world of tomorrow forever. And so that's why we talk about lifelong learning, right? The kids, after leaving the school systems, will have to keep on learning just to make sure that they don't get lagging too far behind what the world requires of them. When your child enters a secondary school in a year time, in a two years time, right, uh, the streaming label would have been removed. They would no longer be seen as an express class student or an NA or NT class student, right? They are just a student offering subject at different levels. Some at G3, which is the current express level. Some at G2, some at G1. G1 is the normal tech uh, level of uh, demand. And so we hope with this shift, we are giving our students a more customized education and less affected by the labels associated with the curriculum. Uh, so hopefully your child will, as we have found in our pilot mm -hmm. schools, enjoy this process of learning with a more diverse group of students in the class. Because in a mixed form class, uh, going forward, you will have students taking a subject dominantly at different levels. If you use today's label to understand tomorrow's system, it's uh, like a mixed form class where you express NA and T mm. students studying together for one third of the time because those subjects are packed at a very common level. And then as the other two thirds of the time, they will split into different classes to attend subject lessons at uh, their respective different. subject level. So this would be the landscape that your child will uh, experience when they go into a secondary school. And hopefully it's one that uh, allow them to reach their full potential across the different subjects that they are taking.